I've written a program, a very simple program, to toggle an I.O. pin here. Um, and I'm going to measure the effect of loading that pin with a resistor. And uh, first of all, I'll set up the cursors here. Put the bottom one here right on zero. And then I'll move the top one. Oops, I just want the top one only. Put it on the top of the waveform here, 5.12 volts. So that's what it is without any loading at all. And I'm going to put in different values of resistor here and uh, we'll see what the effect is. Now I'm going to connect a 10k ohm resistor. Um, for those of you that don't know, K stands for 1000. It's a short form for using or for um, bigger units. So a 10k ohm resistor is a 10,000 ohm resistor. So I've connected the, the resistor, or I'm going to connect it between the I.O. pin and zero volts, and we'll see the effect on the display here. Let's get it on. So I'm not sure if, it's, if you noticed that, but it's barely visible. The top part of the display up here drops a very a little bit. You can just see it underneath the cursor there. If I move the cursor out of the way, you might see that. See the slight, slight change. Let's be more dramatic here. I'll get a, a lower value resistor. I'm going to put a 1K resistor, 1000 ohms. So let's try the 1000 ohm. Here it is without, and there it is with. So as I connect and disconnect, it's connected now, disconnected. So you can see there's already a significant change in the voltage level, the maximum voltage that the I.O. pin can produce with a 1K load. So if I move that cursor down, can measure it, and I get, uh, we'll call it 4.8 volts for a 1K ohm or 1000 ohm resistor. I'm going to put a heavier load on here. I'm going to use um, a 270 ohm resistor and we'll see what that does. So now I'm going to hook up a 270 ohm resistor. It's not hooked up right now and now it's connected. Quite a dramatic change, isn't it? Let's just put the cursor down there and measure that voltage. And what do we get? 4.16. All right, I'm going to load it down a little bit more. I'm going to put a 220 ohm resistor in there, and that's about the maximum I'm going to consider putting on there. Um, it's starting to draw a lot of current. And by the way, this is not a, an, uh, an Arduino that I'm doing this on. I'm using a microchip pick part, and uh, it doesn't have quite the same uh, current handling capability. So um, and I'll repeat this experiment with an Arduino to show you the difference. So the next resistor I'll put on here is 220 ohms. All right, now I'm going to try the 220 ohm resistor. I'll just move the cursor out of the way again. So just to verify, no load, 5.12 or 5.04 volts. And now I'll load it. Quite a big change there. Let's measure that voltage. So I can call it, I'm going to call it 4 volts even. So I won't leave it on too long because it is drawing a lot of current out of the I.O. pin. And now it's disconnected. So I did some calculations and based on uh, assuming that the resistor is exactly the value that it's on, written on the uh, body of the resistor, I didn't measure with an ohmmeter. So with the 220 ohm resistor it dropped, the top of the signal dropped down to 4 volts and that was about 18.2 milliamps being drawn out of the I.O. pin. With 270 ohms uh, it dropped down to 4.16 volts and that gave about 15.4 milliamps. With the 1000 ohm resistor, we got 4.8 volts, and that was 4.8 milliamps. And with the 10K resistor, um, there was hardly a noticeable drop in the voltage, and uh, I couldn't even measure it on the scope here with the cursors. So I just said 5 volts across 10,000 ohms, and that gives you half a milliamp. So it gives you an idea of the amount of current drawn and the voltage drops. Now, what I'm going to do is repeat a couple of these resistors, um, but hook them up from the uh, power supply 5 volt line to the I.O. pin and uh, we'll see how the bottom of the waveform will actually lift up. So let me get this set up. 
So now I've set it up with the resistor between the I.O. pin and the plus 5 volt line. Let's move this cursor out of the way here. Now the resistor is hooked up, resistor is disconnected. Let's move the bottom cursor out of the way for the moment. That's where the effect will be at the bottom there. So resistor is not connected and now it is connected. So at this point you just can't see the difference. It's connected, not connected. So let's try a little more loading. I'll put a 1000 ohm resistor there. All right, now I've got a 1000 ohm resistor. Not connected, now it's connected. Now you can see the bottom of the waveform here. See how it moves up a little bit? Doesn't quite go to zero volts anymore. So that's 1000 ohms. Let's try uh, 270 ohms. Okay, here's 270. Not connected, 270 ohms connected. So what I'm going to do here is leave it on and I'm going to measure it. So our zero line is there and it came up to approximately somewhere between 400 and 320. Let's just call it 400 millivolts for a 270 ohm resistor. All right, here's the last resistor, the 220 ohm resistor. It's disconnected and now it's connected. So the voltage came up a little bit more, about 480 millivolts, somewhere around there. And there it is disconnected. All right, let's measure the voltage, the current through the resistor in this case. Um, let's look at the example of the 220 ohm resistor. So um, in, in this case, we've got the resistor connected between the I.O. pin and the 5 volt supply. So the voltage across the resistor is 5 volts minus the little rise in the voltage um, with, that we saw on the screen here, which is 480 millivolts. So it becomes 5 volts minus the 480 millivolts divided by 220 ohms. And that gives me 20.5 milliamps. So that's um, the maximum amount of current that the I.O. pin is allowed to draw. Now, this little experiment here has shown um, one of the, the limitations of these I.O. pins that I talked about earlier, that uh, you can't draw an infinite amount of current through them. And, um, the re and what happens is when you draw too much current, or the more current you draw, the uh, more um, voltage drop across the switch inside the microcontroller, and so there's less voltage out on the I.O. pin available to uh, drive a load. So you do want to limit the amount of current flowing out of an I.O. pin and so you get the full 5 volts. And uh, it also showed another difference or another limitation. When I had the, IO, the resistor between the I.O. pin and ground, so when the I.O. pin is pulled high, that's when current is flowing through the resistor, the upper switch is on. And you'll notice that um, there was almost one volt drop across the, uh, the switch in the microcontroller when the upper switch is on and when the lower switch is on it was only 480 millivolts and that, that indicates that the two switches are different it's an asymmetric drive and that's because of the uh, the manufacturing process the upper switch is a p-channel device a p-channel mosfet and the lower device will be or the lower switch will be an n-channel mosfet um, that's just the way the switches work inside the uh, microcontroller. And P-channel MOSFETs aren't as good conductors as N-channels. So that would explain why the upper switch didn't allow as much current to come out or uh, had a much higher voltage drop across it when the same value of resistor was applied to the I.O. pin. So anyways, I hope uh, this shows, uh, um, shows you guys what the limitations are and what happens to the I.O. pin of a microcontroller when you um, when you load it like this. Um, actually what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook it up to a um, an Arduino and show you the difference between the microchip and the Arduino. Now I'm going to repeat the experiment with an Arduino which uses the Atmel ATmega uh, 328 chip and they're rated um, to 40 milliamps maximum for the I.O. pins. Let's move this cursor out of the way. So we got the same kind of waveform here toggling up and down. I'm going to connect the resistor between the I.O. pin 
and uh, ground as I did in the first case and we'll see what happens. So in this case I'm going to just use the 220 ohm resistor to get the most dramatic change here. So here it is without the resistor connected. Here it is with the resistor connected. So let's move the upper cursor down here and measure that voltage. About 4.64. So if I look back at my notes, uh, under the same conditions for the uh, microchip part, the uh, voltage was down to 4 volts instead of 4.6. So you can see that there's a much less voltage drop across the upper switch in the uh, um, the Atmel AT Mega part. So now let's change it so that the resistor is between the I.O. pin and uh, 5 volts. So we'll test the lower switch in the uh, microcontroller. All right, here we now I've, I've changed the resistor over. Now it's between the 5 volt supply line, the 5 volt line and the Arduino pin. And it's not hooked up at the moment. Now I'll hook it up. And you can see the change. Not a lot, but it's definitely there. So I'll turn the, the lower cursor on and measure voltage there. So 0.48 millivolts. And what did I get? I got the same actually. For the 220 ohm resistor, the microchip part is, was also 0.48. So right now it's drawn 20 milliamps through the resistor into the I.O. pin. And there's still more room uh, with this to to put uh, to draw more current. To, we can get to up to 40 milliamps as I mentioned before. So, this uh, little experiment showed the uh, limitations of an I.O. pin. Um, what happens when you draw a lot of current out of an I.O. pin? The voltage drop across the switches inside the microcontroller increases and you get less voltage at the output of the I.O. pin. And also, uh, I showed you the difference between two different microcontrollers because they are they are rated differently. The microchip part is rated at 20 milliamps and the Atmel part, which is the Arduino, is rated at 40 milliamps. So I hope you found this little tutorial quite interesting. And uh, stick around and watch some more. Thanks for watching.